Hello, I'm Jonathan Watson, pastor of Cape Fear Presbyterian Church. Thank you for joining me on this Christmas Eve. No matter where you're watching from, you are welcome here. Let us worship God. On this holy night, let us hear the angel's proclamation. Do not be afraid, for to you is born this day a Savior. Glory be to God and peace on earth. Hope, peace, joy, and love. Four candles, four promises, continually offered to us by God. And all of them manifest in this one we light tonight, the Christ candle. In Christ, we find the hope of transformation, the peace that follows justice, the joy of self-fulfillment in community, and the love that encompasses us in all our diversity, empowering us to make our own unique contribution to this world. In Christ, we find light and life and the courage to be like him, answering his call and following in his footsteps. Let us pray together. Come, Come to, to us, us, Lord Jesus, 
be born in us this night, in our hearts, our minds, our lives. May the light of your life be kindled in us and lead us to the shining truth of God with us. God for us, God in us. Amen. Let us pray. Christmas God, because you came to us as a helpless little baby, we are reminded that each of us, young and old alike, are your children. Through the incarnation of your Son, Jesus Christ, 
The word has been made flesh, and light has shattered the darkness. Bless this our worship, and lead us to your everlasting light. Amen. A reading from Luke's Gospel, chapter 2. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your family may have favorite Christmas traditions, like certain recipes you bake every year, special ornaments you hang in your Christmas tree, or decorations you place around your home. Maybe you display a treasured nativity set that has been passed down to you. You probably have a favorite holiday tune, or at least a certain version of it sung by that famous crooner. These are some of the things that help us get into the spirit of Christmas and remind us of cherished times past. Watching holiday movies is a favorite tradition for many families, including mine. Our annual must-watch list typically includes, in no particular order, Elf, A Charlie Brown Christmas, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, A Christmas Story, and Christmas Vacation. Another classic film that is widely considered to be required holiday viewing is It's a Wonderful Life, which you can see again or for the first time tonight at 8 o'clock on NBC. That this movie is so popular during the Christmas season is interesting, considering that it didn't set out to be a Christmas movie. In fact, it premiered in January of 1946, and it was a box office flop that didn't gain popularity until some 30 years later. If you're not familiar with the film, the plot, based on the 1943 short story entitled The Greatest Gift, centers around the character of George Bailey, played by the late Jimmy Stewart. Early on, we learn that George has had to forego college, along with many of his life's ambitions of exploring the world and building skyscrapers, in order to run his father's banking business in the town where he lives. He's grown annoyed 
with what he calls the crummy little town of Bedford Falls, watching from the sidelines as his friends and family achieve the success that he's only dreamed of. When a financial discrepancy at the bank puts George in a difficult position, he's visited by his guardian angel, Clarence, who comes to show George what life would have been like if he had never been born. One of the prominent themes of the film is George's despair, and it's not unwarranted. He is facing pressure at work and at home, and his reputation hangs in the balance. It's the 1940s, a particularly anxious period of time in American life because of World War II and the after-effects of the Great Depression. It's not an especially jolly holiday film. In, in fact, there are parts of it that are downright sad. But what it lacks in glitter, it more than makes up for with heart. There is a moment about midway through the film before George meets Clarence. When he comes to the realization that his life has become anything but wonderful, in the midst of a crowded bar, he offers a, a near-silent, humble, hesitant prayer to God about his situation. God. I'm not a praying man, but if you're up there and you can hear me, show me the way. I'm at the end of my rope, right? Show me the way, oh God. What makes this such a powerful moment are the tears in George's eyes the sweat on his brow, and the pained expression on his face as he pleads with God under his breath. We see and believe his earnestness. Years later, Jimmy Stewart told an interviewer, as I said those words, I felt the loneliness, the hopelessness of people who had nowhere to turn and my eyes filled with tears. I broke down sobbing. In some ways, George embodies what we've been collectively experiencing for the past nine months. The global pandemic has upended almost every facet of life. It's been a struggle for many just to, just to get to this point in the year. For some, feelings of despair, anxiety, and worry fill the days. These have been challenging times. We're looking for God to show us a way. Throughout the Bible, God's people experienced similar difficulties. And we have much to learn from the rich Old Testament texts that are such a part of the season of Advent. Verses that, that paint a picture of hope in the midst of despair. From the book of Isaiah, we hear the prophet's anguished cries, O oh Lord, if you would tear open the heavens and come down. But verses like these are tempered by this assurance. Quote, but there will be no gloom for those who were in anguish. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. End quote. This great light, the great light that would illuminate the darkness the people had been experiencing, 
would be God's Son, Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, which literally means God with us. Fast forward to the New Testament and the glorious fulfillment of this divine promise. From the familiar words we heard earlier in Luke, the angel said to the shepherds, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. Jesus' birth is good news. Jesus' birth is great joy. A weary world rejoices. At the end of a long year filled with turmoil, God breaks through. As author Madeline Lengel described it, the glorious impossible made possible. George Bailey was shown firsthand what life would have been like without him. And in the end, he discovered that a a wonderful life was not only possible, but it already existed. He realized how many lives he touched and that he was beloved. At one point, Clarence tells him, strange, isn't it? Each one's life touches so many other lives. When he isn't around, He leaves an awful hole, doesn't he? Friends, Christmas reminds us that we are God's beloved. Jesus Christ was born into a dark and hopeless world in order that the world would know God's love. Embodied love, love made flesh, walking on earth. This love is unconditional. It's constant. It never fails. Tonight we invite Jesus to be born once again in our hearts and lives. To enter our circumstances. To help carry us on with hope. May the hope, peace, joy, and love of Jesus Christ be yours. Merry Christmas.
us pray. Good and gracious God, on this holy night, you gave us your Son, the Lord of the universe, wrapped in swaddling clothes, the Savior of all, lying in a manger. On this holy night, draw us into the mystery of your love. Join our voices with the heavenly host, that we may sing your glory on high. Give us a place among the shepherds, that we may find the one for whom we have waited, Jesus Christ, your word made flesh, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, in the splendor of eternal light, God forever and ever. Amen. On this holy night in which God joins heaven and earth, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all those in need. Let us pray for the church around the world as it celebrates the birth of Christ. Bless all those who are entrusted with Christian ministry, that your word might be proclaimed with truth and courage across our world. Bestow your wisdom on all who govern, that in honoring the earth and its diverse races, cultures, and religions, we may celebrate the light of this holy night. Grant reconciliation to those faced with conflict and violence, that they may live in the peace of this holy night. Let us pray for all who are cold, hungry, or alone this night. Embrace with your tender care all who wander alone or have no place to lay their head, that they may experience the hope of this holy night. Let us pray for all who are anxious, depressed, or ill. Draw near to those who find this season a source of pain or grief, and to all who are suffering or sick, especially those we remember in our own hearts, that they may feel the comfort of this holy night. Let us pray for parents, families, and children. Strengthen families in the bonds of love and commitment. That our homes might be places of joy and peace. Let us pray for ourselves and for the blessings of Christmas. Open our hearts to your presence. That we may be transformed by the new birth of this holy night. Let us give thanks for all our loved ones from whom we are separated from this Christmas. Give us grace to entrust those who have passed before us into tender loving care, that we might join with them in singing your praises this holy night. May God grant unto us whatever we need, that we might serve him in showing his love and compassion to our world allowing the light of God to illuminate the dark places with grace and truth. And now we pray all these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Since this is our last new video for the year, I want to take a moment to thank you for tuning in each week. I hope these messages have been encouraging for not only our members, but also for the many friends and, and total strangers who've been watching across the country and beyond. A special thank you to my family. Well, let's face it, the crew, my son James and wife Darcy for all their help. And now friends, let us go into this night proclaiming that we have seen the glory of God, believing that there is a light that shines in the darkness, which the darkness shall not overcome. And may the love of the Creator, the joy of the Spirit, and the peace of the Christ child be with you this Christmas and evermore. Amen.